Hi everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurophysician from Rajamundry, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the books Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating topic the non tremor hyperkinetic movement disorders movement disorders part 7 so we are going to talk about the non tremor hyperkinetic movement disorders part 7 of the movement disorders so what are all the non tremor hyperkinetic movement disorders first comes chorea chorea means dance but what is chorea Chorea is characterized by involuntary, irregular, purposeless, random and non-rhythmic hyperkinesias, milk-made grip, hypotonia, motor impersistence, tromtone tongue with increased blink rate are characteristic. Huntington's disease and Sydenham's chorea are common causes of chorea. But what is Huntington's disease? It's a triad of dementia, emotional disturbance and familial nature. Anticipation. The CAG repeats tends to lengthen in successive generations causing earlier onset of the disease particularly with paternal transmission. Neuropathologically, there is atrophy most prominent in the caudate nucleus. Akitosis means without fixed position. The hyperkinesias are slower, more sustained and larger in amplitude than chorea with writhing in character. Athetosis is usually congenital, the result of perinatal injury to the basal ganglia. Double athetosis may be associated with status marmoteris of the basal ganglia, which is usually due to anoxic brain injury. Dystonia Dystonia movements are patterned tending to recur in the same location in contrast to the random and fleeting nature of the chorea, usually accompanied by co-contraction of agonistic and antagonistic muscles with twisting postures. Here we need to understand a law known as Sherrington's law of reciprocal innervation. According to this law, when agonists contract, antagonists have to relax. For example, when I want to perform an act by lifting it, my flexors biceps will contract, but my extensors triceps will relax. So, agonist biceps flexors will contract, antagonist that is triceps extensors have to relax. So, an agonist contracts, antagonist have to relax. Both does not contract together except in some physiological conditions like sweating or standing. So, if there is a co-contraction of agonist and antagonist, antagonistic muscles, it is pathological that is dystonia. So, dystonic movements are patterned tending to recur in the same location in contrast to the random and fleeting nature of the chorea, usually accompanied by co-contraction of both agonistic and antagonistic muscles with twisting postures. And very interesting phenomenon we observe in dystonia that is known as sensory trick. That is by placing the hand in a particular position the dystonia seems to disappear. We actually do not know the mechanism of sensory trick, but this we have seen in patients suffering from dystonia. So, sensory trick is a hallmark of primary dystonia, is an internally generated specific voluntary movement aimed at ameliorating the dystonia. Example in cervical dystonia, the patient may find that keeping her hand behind the neck may help keep her head straight and the dystonia to come down. 
Next hypercantic movement disorder which we are going to observe is hemibalismus. What is hemibalismus? It is a wild flinging incessant movements that occur on one side of the body due to contralateral subthalamic nucleus lesion. Non-ketotic hyperglycemia is a common etiology. Dyskinesias it refers to abnormal involuntary movements related to drugs especially dopamine. We give dopaminergic drugs in Parkinsonism disease and we have observed these dyskinesias as a side effect of dopaminergic drugs. So dyskinesias it refers to abnormal involuntary movements related to drugs example dopamine. It seems likely that the long term dopamine receptor blockade leads to denervation hypersensitivity of the receptor. Myoclonus Myoclonus is defined as a single or a repetitive, abrupt, rapid, jerky, arrhythmic involuntary contractions. Asterixis is a negative myoclonus seen in metabolic encephalopathy particularly hepatic encephalopathy, it is an inability to sustain normal muscle tone with arms outstretched and wrist extended like stopping the traffic, the lapse in postural tone may cause the hands suddenly to flop down, then quickly recover causing a slow and irregular flapping motion. So, asterixis is particularly seen in metabolic encephalopathy, especially hepatic encephalopathy. Palatal myoclonus is due to a lesion in the gullein molaret triangle and it disappears during sleep. Tics, otherwise known as habit spasms. The patient has some degree of awareness of the movement but must make a movement in response to the urge of some compelling inner force. Functional movement disorders. We especially see these kind of functional movement disorders in women to gain sympathy and attract attention. It is otherwise a, a manifestation of attention seeking behavior. So what are functional movement disorders and how can we diagnose it? The typical features of functional movement disorders include abrupt onset with severe involvement and maximal disability immediately, onset in one limb with rapid generalization, spontaneous resolution and recurrence, a decrease in tremor with distraction, refractoriness to conventional anti-tremor treatment and entrainment. But what is entrainment? It is a change in the frequency of a tremor to match that of a task performed by another body part. So another body part if it performs, these people with functional movement disorders try to match the frequency of the tremor on the other body part. This is entrainment and it is suggestive of functional movement disorder. Normally tremor amplitude and frequency have an inverse relationship that is that is more the amplitude less the frequency or less the amplitude more the frequency. So normal tremor amplitude and frequency have an inverse relationship but a psychogenic tremor may be paradoxically have both high amplitude and high frequency especially when attention is focused on the tremor. So they have high amplitude and high frequency especially focused on the tremor. These are all the important points of the non-tremor hyperkinetic movement disorders. The other important clinical points I put in a book exam only clinical neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. This book contains all the useful information in points about the clinical neurology which will be especially useful for clinical neurology exams like history taking, examination, hemiplegia, paraplegia. The other important concepts of neurology I put in a question and answer format in a book focused neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. This book will be especially useful for Viva or Orals and this book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested this book could be purchased online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts on 
non tremor hyperkinetic movement disorders if you have enjoyed it please like and share the link but please subscribe to my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my web page dr sinwas concepts thank you